Okay, okay. there you go. All right, I'm now going to hand it on over to yourself, Kate. Okay, well, um, welcome everybody and apologize um, for the um, bit, bits of techie slip ups there, but I think we're, we're good to go. So uh, my name's Kate Wiles and um, I am a digital innovation and development coach at Nottingham College. Uh, Nottingham College is uh, the third biggest FE provider in the UK. So obviously you can imagine we've got quite a lot of students, quite a lot of staff uh, in our organization. Um, I'm also a um, UK Minecraft ambassador, uh, which means means that I get to share the Minecraft joy um, across the globe um, with other educators um, that are either seasoned pros at using Minecraft education or just beginning their journey on the platform. Um, I'm also a STEM ambassador, which means that I go around to um, different primary schools and libraries um, as a volunteer and introduce people to um, game-based learning um, to encourage them to embrace um, STEM subjects and maybe give it a go when they embark on their next educational journey. Okay, so that's a little bit about me. So um, today I want to talk to you about um, Minecraft education. Um, I'm hoping you guys have heard of Minecraft. Um, if not, your sons and daughters probably will have, or maybe your friends, or maybe your gamers yourselves. Um, so what Minecraft is, um, uh, Minecraft education, sorry, is, is a version of the popular Minecraft platform. So hopefully, if my share button works, I'm going to play you a little bit of a video just to show you how it looks if you're not familiar with the um, Minecraft um, interface. We are born learners. We crave new challenges and new adventures. Our creativity is limitless. And when we learn through play, amazing, often unexpected things happen. In schools and in homes around the world, students are using Minecraft to build cities, explore coral reefs, to create with code, run science experiments, and to tell fantastic stories. Minecraft has always been about exploration and discovery bringing together a global community of co-creators. Now, the next generation of engineers, biologists, and designers are inspiring us with their creations. Minecraft Education Edition empowers learners to solve problems they care about, to connect in new ways far beyond the classroom, and to build a better world through the power of play. Oh, I hope that's whetted your appetite a little bit for the potential that um, Minecraft education has in the classroom. Um, and the beauty of the platform is it's not aimed at any particular age range. Um, I've delivered Minecraft education sessions to primary school children all the way up to adult learners. And both sets of age ranges have actually got something really, really valuable out of um, experiencing it. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hopefully jump into Minecraft education, give you a little bit of a tour, um, just so you can familiarise yourself with how it looks, uh, what's available to you there as educators. Uh, and then once I've done that, if it works, which I'm hoping it's going to, um, I'm going to also introduce you to uh, another platform, which is almost like the sister platform to Minecraft education, and that's called Code.org. And now code.org is the perfect starting point on your Minecraft journey with your learners. Um, the best thing about um, code.org is it's completely free and it's open source. So you won't need to get any software downloaded or anything like that to give code.org a try. Uh, and it sits beautifully and seamlessly with the actual platform of Minecraft education. So here we go. Let's try this. All right, so I'm really hoping you guys can see a Minecraft logo popping up on your screen any second now. I'll just give it a sec. Yeah. Not at the so, moment. It's, um, we're still on the browser, Kate. Oh, okay. Let me try it again. Mm, 
let's try this. All right, let's try that again. Chloe, if you can give me the nod, if you can see it, I would appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, we're on to a winner. <laughs> Yay, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Brilliant. OK, so welcome to Minecraft Education Edition. Um, if you are familiar with Minecraft, the actual game, um, this should be quite familiar to you because the interfaces are exactly the same. Um, this is a really nice starting point for your students because they've already got a familiarity, if you can get that word out, um, with how it's looking. So as you can see, there's me looking around. If you can see, that's my little avatar there. Um, so the first thing we do when we join Minecraft Education is design our avatar. Um, and how we physically want to look when we're playing our Minecraft education activities. So you do that by clicking here on that little coat hanger there, you see? So those of you that are familiar with Minecraft will know these two characters. Um, they're our default characters of Alex and Steve, and they are the pioneers of Minecraft in every shape and form. Um, I'm a massive fan of Alex and Steve, and they will always be present in everything Minecraft, I should imagine. But because we're playing Minecraft education, we can look completely different. We don't have to be Alex or Steve. Um, there's my little avatar there. Scroll down, you can see the types of avatars that you can be. Yeah, so your students will have the choice of how they want to look which I think is a really lovely, inclusive way of getting that identity when you're on the platform. Um, you can actually design your own avatars as a good starting point, um, but that's another piece of software that you can then upload as a file into Minecraft. Um, so if your students are budding developers, they can potentially be either Alex or Steve as a developer and so on. Um, Minecraft has updates continuously. So if there's a certain season happening, say like Halloween's come in um, or Christmas, um, check your avatars. Oh, here we go. Look, there's some old ones there. Um, you may be able to have the choice to actually look like a pumpkin or something that's going to be relevant for what's actually happening in the world at that particular time. All right. So once we've got our little avatar ready, there she is. Um, I'm just going to take you to our settings button. So here we've got three options. So settings. We click on that. Here we go. And here in settings, it gives you your accessibility features. Um, all of these little buttons here, you can turn them on or off. Uh, you can enable the chat. So you as the educator has got complete control over how um, your particular Minecraft world or the built-in activity that you're going to deliver, um, how it behaves and how your students, which you invite separately with a code, can behave and the things that they can do. Um, being new to Minecraft education, there's a lovely little intro here for actually how to move around. Um, I found with a lot of my students that they are used to playing Minecraft, the actual game, uh, but they might play on their PlayStation, they might play on their Xbox. So they're not used to using a keyboard and mouse. So this little introduction here is really great because it gives you um, a bit of an introduction on how to just do do that and basically move around on the keyboard, um, a little bit about how you're going to place a block. Um, Things like your inventory, which is where you put all your things when you're going to um, go around your world. Um, crafting tables, everything Minecraft language in this section. So I think if you're going to give it a try, um, once you've got Minecraft education downloaded on your system, have a little flick through here and that will give you all the, the pointers that you need to be able to navigate the world and move around and do what you need to do. So, yeah. Just going down your settings, you can change your audio, you can change your video. Um, a new feature to Minecraft Education is cloud storage. So this section, it will actually hook up to your OneDrive to save Minecraft files. Um, so if there's a particular world that you really like, you want to revisit, you can save it just like any other file. And if you click that, it will give you the option to save that directly into your OneDrive, which is a really handy feature. Um, you can also change the language. So if you are delivering to I don't, ESOL students, um, here's where you would change to a preferred language in that section there. Okay, so that's setting. So what does Minecraft education look like? Let's have a look. So I'm going to 
a button. You will get this interface when you move into your play area. Um, My Worlds is a section of worlds that you have physically created. But the thing that I wanted to show you today um, is the lesson library, which is this section here. So I'm going to click on this button. So the lesson library is split into four sections. Uh, we have subject kits, monthly build challenges, again, another how to play and starter worlds. Um, if I had a good hour or two with you guys, I'd take you through each one. But I think um, obviously because we've delayed, I'm just going to take you through um, our subject kits here, which is where you're going to find all of the activities that Minecraft Education have produced so far, um, but split into really nice little sections that meet our curriculum needs. There you go. You see those tiles there. So it covers quite a lot of content. Like I said before, they are um, developing um, activities all the time. And we do get releases continuously as ambassadors that we then share with our communities. And you know, the next time you log into Minecraft Education, you'll see something different, which is quite exciting. So if I just click on Computer Science, it breaks it down further into different lessons. So each one of these tiles is a little lesson. Yeah. Uh, I'll just click back. So if I choose science, so you can see that's split into um, all the lessons in there. And then we can click further. I'm just going to go into chemistry for you. And even further. So I've chosen science, chemistry. So what is available for my chemistry students? Lots of different things. So if you take some time before you do deliver on Minecraft education, just to browse the availability of um, the subject content that's there, I think that will set you in good stead to deliver something really, really dynamic and exciting. So each one is a lesson. So I'm going to go on this one, um, our element scavenger hunt here. And once you click into that, it will give you some information about this particular activity, which is a pre-made activity by Minecraft Education. So obviously we're looking at chemistry, so that's going to hit our science targets there. Um, it will try and give us an age range, but please don't be um, swayed by that, especially if your students are new to Minecraft. Um, so um, I think it kind of works for everybody. And if you embed it into your curriculum on an appropriate level, um, a Minecraft education activity can just be an add-on to what you're delivering. Um, I would never encourage an educator to use Minecraft as a sole resource for a lesson. Um, it is part of a lesson. Um, so it kind of adds that little icing on the cake almost. So scrolling down before we begin, it will give you a description of what's going to happen in this activity. It also gives us some learning objectives here, just there. And we all like teacher preps and notes. So um, that is here. We can read more as well. So all this is doing is giving you the ammunition almost to create a really, really robust, rounded lesson um, with the added element of this particular activity. It also gives us different ideas. So you don't have to do everything on here, but sometimes it's quite good just to pick a few of these out and, and give them a try with your students. Um, so the student activities are almost follow ups. There we go. And finally, it gives you some ideas of how to assess the learning process that's taken place within the activity just there. So Minecraft education really caters for educators. It's not going to expect you to just jump straight in and just deliver on Minecraft. It will give you a really nice rounded lesson plan to actually go in um, and get the best out of what we're going to do. So what does it look like here? We've got a couple of um, options here. There is a, a more detailed lesson plan that you can um, sort of have a look at before you begin, if you wish. And once you get au okay with the platform, you can share and assign it to certain students or other staff members or educators through there. But what we need to do first is create our world. OK, so this just takes a few seconds just to come out and it will give us a few little pointers, just like the real Minecraft game. Um, sometimes our students really enjoy that because 
they they try and be quite funny sometimes and it makes you rain chickens and does bizarre things like that with pieces of code um so that's quite always good fun um when we're waiting for things to load so bear with There you go, it's giving us those pointers as it takes its time. <laughs> We're getting there now. Yeah, so it's given us a few little pointers here as well, back in that settings area um, where we can do cheats if we wish. As you can see, it's doing the old loading bar there. Shouldn't be too much longer. Ah, we're in. So here we are. This is Minecraft Education and this is the element scavenger hunt. So. As you can see on the um, left hand side of the screen, it gives you some control tips. So even if you've done a, a few kind of embedding sessions of figuring out how to move around, how to jump, how to mine, how to smash things up, um, it will still give you that little control um, area there. If you want to hide that, you can just press H, but I'll leave that on the screen for the minute. Um, so I'm gonna have a little walk around. There it goes, a little chicken there. Say hi to the little chicken. Hi, chicken. Hello. Oh, there you go. So, I'm just going to go back to the beginning. So, this is what it looks like. So, this lesson, can you see here? It will give us the um, description of what's going to happen if that chicken will get out of the way. Go away, you. Um, <laughs> and it will just spell it out to the students what's expected within this lesson. Okay. Give you a sec to have a little read on that. If that chicken will go, go away. Okay, so I'm just going to click on here. So that's my little hand there. Can you see that flicking out? It's trying to mine it, but I'm not going to mine it. I'm going to open it. So that's I've, all I've done there is just open a chest and there's some stuff in that chest here. Um, my inventory is this little section there. It looks like a little grid and I can pull stuff into the inventory if I wish. There we go. So I'm going to need all this stuff to be able to do this activity. All right. So that is a bit of an insight into Minecraft education. Um, I'm going to move on now because I'm conscious of time, but I just wanted to show you what a lesson would look like and um, how you can move around kind of in that particular world. So I'm just going to come out of there. So all I've done to get out of it is just press escape and it gives me the option to save and exit. And that will just boot me back out straight into my um, home screen Minecraft education stop sharing there all right so I did mention at the top of the session um, there's something that you should do before you jump straight into the platform um, now that is called the hour of code so I'm going to share that hopefully you can see that Chloe are we good you are good. Can we see that? Oh, that's fantastic. So I've just shared my screen again, but this is not the Minecraft education platform. This is a different platform called the um, code.org platform. Um, now I'm showing you this because it is a really great introduction before you jump into the major one, but it also shows um, a little bit of block coding if you're not familiar with block coding. Now, Minecraft education has many different types of activities and the one I did demo was a bit of a scavenger hunt but the um, the majority of them do use block code um, so block code looks like this can you see this little workspace here again we've got our little minecraft area here there's little Alex there one of the major characters um, she's asking me to get supplies for a voyage ahead collect a boat from a chest okay so here on my workshop there's Alex there's the chest so what I'm going to need to do is move Alex up into that chest there to see if she's going to be able to get something out of there. So I've already got a workspace and I've got my pieces of code. 
So what I'm going to do is drag bits of code into the workspace and click them together like so. So if I do that, yeah, that is block coding. So if you wanted to show your students something fancy, you can click on this button here and it shows what they've actually coded in JavaScript, which blows their minds sometimes, especially um, reluctant coders that don't think they can do it because they, they're not very good with math, say, or they've never tried any kind of computer science. Um, it does look very impressive uh, when you've got many, many lines of code and you flip it over just to show them that and that they get quite proud and quite um, chuffed with themselves that they've managed to do that. So as you can see, when run, that's this button here. I'm asking Alex to move forward three times. So if I click run, let's see what she does. Yay, I think she's done it. Well done, Alex. <laughs> yeah, so that's puzzle one complete. Um, there are 12 puzzles, each one a little bit harder, a little bit more complicated than the last. Um, and what that will do is really set up your students for logical thinking. Um, our students at Nottingham College love to work on these kind of projects because they um, encourage things like collaboration, um, digital literacy, peer-to-peer um, -peer learning. Um, I've found that our students that are particularly au fait with moving around, getting through all these activities at the top to the finish, are more than happy to help out their peers if they're getting stuck. Um, so it's really encouraging those soft skills as well and relationships within the groups. Um, and it's, it just kind of creates that really dynamic, um, exciting classroom space. Okay, so I am um, hopefully... Do, do, do. There we go. So I'm going to stop there because I understand it's half past 12. So I know you guys are probably going to want to rush back to whatever you're doing. But um, I really hope that I've given you just a little bit of an insight into the benefits of using something like uh, Minecraft education and the Hour of Code uh, and game based learning as a whole. Um, I think it's such a dynamic platform um to use and it really does do everything for the educator in preparation to deliver the sessions um and um at Nottingham College we found that students that were a bit reluctant with certain subjects say maths or English were actually turning up for these lessons because they knew that it was going to be a Minecraft lesson um and on, on the back of that um, our engagement was better the general enjoyment of learning was better and um, the overall achievement was higher. So um, I can't really um, tell you much more about the benefits of game-based learning, but I think um, Minecraft education is an absolutely brilliant place to start. So thank you, everybody, for joining me today. And um, if you did want to follow me on LinkedIn for any tips, um, just look for um, Kate Wiles, BA Ons, and that's me. Um, give us a wave and anything that you need about starting your Minecraft education journey. I'd be more than happy to have a Teams call with you and, um, yeah, get you up and running. So thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kate. We've got a few thank yous um, in the chat as well. I know some thank folks you. have got to run for... <laughs> Yeah, of course. Yeah, that was really cool. Thank you. I really like that um, there's actually a lot of stuff on there already created for different subjects. I think sometimes that can be a bit of a fear that like, you know, um, there's a lot of, you know, will I ha how much am I going to have to do for this and how many things am I going to have to develop, like new things from scratch. And I love that there's loads already. Do you know what I mean? So people can just get Absolutely. stuck in. Yeah, I think that's the beauty of it. When we first started using it, it's like, oh, my goodness, do we have to make our own worlds? But you can. Once you get in the flow of it and you've got a certain element or subject that you want to teach, sure, go in there and make your own worlds. But in the meantime, use the ones that Minecraft have already made for you. And the one of the best things about the platform is it was actually developed by educators and uh, Mojang Studios who created the original Minecraft game. Um, oh, I've just seen something about a, is it free? Um, it's $5 per license if you did want to give it a go. Um, but if you are an Office 365 subscriber, you will be entitled to a free trial. So give it a go on the free trial. Um, if you like it, if you love it, go for it. Go for those licenses. Um, 
I think it's definitely worth getting a class license and, and that can be recycled throughout um, different academic years as well. So once you're in, you're in and, and off you go. Fab, I love that. So you can have a little play on the trial. Do you know how long the trial is at all, Kate? I'm not sure because it sometimes does change. Um, yeah. So yeah, just check out um, Minecraft Ed's um, dot com and you should be able to find out everything you need through there that is fab thank you thank you very very much and um, i have one last question if that's all right unless, yes, of course. unless anyone else has got any more questions and um, please do pop them into the chat or you can just unmute and ask okay my question is about um the ease of getting into it so what about um like, how have teachers kind of got onto it especially those that may be a little less confident digitally um, what we have done is um, our, there's a, a learning path on Microsoft Learn um, dedicated to um, getting educators up and running yeah. on the platform. And it's really great. It gives you um, a very basic introduction to how to move around, um, how to um, get your students onto the platform, how to build a house, how to mine, how to knock your house down, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So a really gentle ease into uh, getting onto that platform. And I've found that delivering those sessions as well um, has really sort of given educators that sort of boost of confidence to go, actually, you know what, I can do this. I reckon I can help my students do it. But when you're in the classroom, your students will know. They they have taught me so much of how to <laughs> actually do things. And um, yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. And I'm like, my goodness, I didn't know you could do that. You know, putting different um, elements together. And oh, gosh, it's it's really great. So the, the biggest teachers are your, your students um, on this platform. Oh, yeah, definitely. A hundred percent. You mentioned Microsoft Learn and there's so much you can do on there, isn't there? And they're all free, yeah. like all those little, Absolutely. like, they tend to be quite short as well. Like, you know, not overbearing, but they're, they're really cool. So if anyone hasn't gone and looked at those, then definitely do that. It's all for different kinds of Microsoft software as well. Um, but I love that there's one Absolutely. on my Minecraft. I'm going to go sign myself up to that um, this weekend. Oh, fab. Sad. Oh, good. But also, um, if you are interested in doing that learning path, um, they do um, Minecraft Education Academies, uh, which is basically um, one of the Minecraft Ed trainers will guide you through as a group on um, on a call um, through the, the three different learning paths. And that's a really nice way of doing it because you're in a room with people from all over the globe and everybody's doing their best to actually um, sort of explore the platform um, and if you do do that you end up with a little pin badge <laughs> that says I've done it I'm a Minecraft educator which is always great so it's, it's just nice to be part of the community in that way so that is an option for you oh I love that love that and we all uh I don't know there's something about us in FE we love a good sticker even better oh, if it's a pin badge for the lanyard right absolutely <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very, very much, Kate. Um, and remember, you've got the power to um, stop recording now as well. <laughs> I have. I have. My goodness. OK, I'm going to do that. Right. Well, thank you for joining, everybody. And um, good luck with your Minecraft journey. Yay.